Well, hello and welcome back. I, this is Nancy, and I'm gonna lead you in a relatively short posture workout um, today. And we're going to warm up our joints and breathe and hopefully have you relax a little bit from all the sitting that you've probably been doing while you've been at home, reading, watching movies, doing the computer, painting, doing whatever you've been doing, and you probably need a break by now. So let's start. Um, oh, before we start, actually, I'd like to say you might have, if you have a yoga strap, great. You can also use a belt or you don't need one of these. A yoga block is helpful or just a pillow, a sofa pillow. And you may not even need those, but we'll keep these here and we'll lie down on our backs with your feet on the wall. So this is called the static back position and it should feel really nice on your body. And it might be nice actually to take a few breaths once you get aligned with your legs in line with the hips, the knees, the ankles and feet all aligned and parallel. And have your arms just be straight and long at your sides, palms up. So this helps to open up the chest. And take a few breaths for a moment. Allow the breath to rise up in the belly on the inhale. And on the exhale, activate the abdominals to press more of the air out of the lungs. And try another nice, easy breath in. And exhale. And then we're gonna start with a simple movement at the hips with our thighs, our femurs, rotating first in so the knees will touch and out and the feet will raise off the wall or turn out away from the wall. Rotate in and out. And for this video, we're going to keep it to 10 repetitions if that's okay. You can always increase the number if you like. <laughs> it's very simple and hopefully it feels good to you to start moving the legs and the hips this way. And we'll do one more. Actually, I wasn't counting as usual. Pause and relax for a moment. Relax your back, especially your belly, your face. And then we're going to open up the legs or widen the feet and legs a little wider. And you kind of would like to check and see if your legs are aligned, feet stay parallel, of course. And then you pause and we'll do a second set. Okay, so you rotate the legs toward each other internally then externally. Rotate in and out. Maintain ease in the belly, the chest, and that's hard to do that way. Don't worry about how far they go. Find yourself to be centered and at ease. And we'll do one more. <laughs> Come back in, release. Now, return your feet and legs to that hip width parallel start position. And again, just take another breath and relax for a moment. And we'll change now and do more hip work. Actually, this is hip flexion. So we'll do one leg at a time. We'll do the right leg first. So flex the right leg from the hip, the foot leaves the wall, and then returns to the wall. It's a pretty simple action. And ideally, you might do as many as 30 repetitions, but for the purposes of our video, we'll just try for 10 thereabouts. And you don't try to move the leg super close to your body. Keep it small movement from the hip so the foot leaves the wall maybe by five inches or so, four inches maybe. You try for consistency. And in fact, you try to put your foot right back on the same space you started. And we'll stop here. And then you might stop and relax the back and the body just to retain your level body against the floor. And then we'll do the left leg the same way. Hip flexion on the left side. Meanwhile, try to keep the leg that's not doing anything steady and still, of course. So while you're doing one action, one part of the body, you don't want to forget that you're connected to the rest of the body, of course. Don't want that leg to be following along. So I don't think I'm counting accurately, but we'll stop here. <laughs> that was the last one on the left side. And then again, you know, just take a moment to shift and relax. And remember, if there's any movement that we do um, that doesn't feel good to you, please feel free to stop. 
and uh, just rest. So the next thing is we're going to straighten one leg at a time to move. So, ah, you've got a nice stretch in the back of the calf and dorsiflexion is the action of the muscles in the front of the calf that pull the toe toward your knee. So you keep the leg nice and straight and stiffen. And first, we're going to rotate this straight leg at the hip, turning in and out. So it's similar to what you did earlier with the bent legs, but now you have a straight leg. Same idea, though, rotating in and out, maintaining the entire leg straight and stiff from hip to foot. So see, I'm keeping my foot moving with the rest of the bones, thigh bone, calf bones, everything staying steady. And then we'll do one more, rotating in and out. Recenter and pause. Now we're going to add another movement here, hip flexion with the straight leg. So we're kind of doing similar actions, but we did started with the bent leg, now we're straight. So you flex at the hip, that means pulling the leg away from the wall, you turn. Keep the foot dorsiflexed. Breathe. Try to relax your chest and shoulders and back. I noticed I was tightening up. Relax your face and your jaw. Back and forth. And again, you try to return to the same place you started. Back and forth. And then, we'll call that good, bend the leg and rest. So reset your position as accurately as you can. You might have to lift your head and check it out. And then we'll straighten the left leg, same thing. So we started with the straight leg, dorsiflexion, rotate internally, then externally. Turn in and out in the left hip. So the foot doesn't go on its own, it's going with the entire leg from the hip down to the foot. Maintain stability on the right leg, so it shouldn't be following along, sometimes people will do that. So steady the right, Move the left, and we'll do one more. Turning in, out, recenter. And now for the straight leg hip flexion. So the action comes right here in this hip joint. Pull the leg off the wall, return the leg to the wall. And again, try to keep the range consistent if you can. Of course, not getting bigger and smaller. So consistent movement. Same size, same level, same position. It gets easier, of course, with practice. And about one more. And then bend that left leg. And if you need to, if you can shake yourself loose, hold your thighs in, or stretch your back a little bit. Um, I'd like to do one more. Um, stretch here at the wall in this static back position. So return to your parallel feet and legs. And we'll do the, um, it's a piriformis stretch. You've probably done it before in other classes. And for some people, it might be easier to move away from the wall a little bit to have a wider open space in the hip. You're going to flex the right leg off the wall. I, I like to straighten it and stretch it and then turn it externally to leg the right ankle or foot on your left thigh. You try to keep the right hip open. Now, options here. You can keep the left foot on the wall flat, totally, or if it's easy enough to do, raise the left heel and hold this position. And a third option, if you can, flex the hips to pull the entire left foot off the wall and hold this extreme hip flexion in both sides. So. We're not gonna hold it for too long, but if you'd like, you build up to a minute or so. So that's strengthening your hip flexor muscles, your quadriceps, stabilizes your back better. So hold and breathe. And then when you're ready, release the foot to the wall, release the right leg from the left, stretch it out, return to your parallel foot position, and we'll do the left side. So I kind of like this flexion first, stretching the leg straight, turning out to bend, place the left ankle or foot on the right thigh. You try to open up the left hip. Again, you can stay here in this position, right foot flat to the wall. Try raising the right heel. That gives you a little bit more of a stretch. 
And then the third and maybe more advanced position that you're building up toward is to flex the hips more to pull the feet off the wall, foot off the wall. And you try to relax the back, the spine, the hips as you hold. And then we'll call that good on this side. You return the foot to the wall, undo the left leg, stretch it and release back to the wall. Now we're going to move positions. I'm going to walk my feet down. I like to hold on to this mat. It's nice to be on a, a mat where you can slide, not a sticky mat, but you have what you have. <laughs> so, so I'm just stretching out that way. It's kind of nice finally to straighten out, open up the hips and feel a nice stretch. But we're going to <clears throat> move to what we call a hook line position, bending the hips and knees, letting the feet rest on the mat, and again, trying to retain parallel lines of the legs all the way down to the feet. And from here, let's do some pelvic tilts. That should feel really nice, rocking and tipping the hips forward and backwards. So you breathe in maybe to arch, and you'll notice the low back arches up but you find your comfort zone with that. And then when you rock back, the low back flattens into the mat. So two positions relating to the low back, the lumbar spine. And the hips shift forward and back. And you might notice the head gets pulled forward and back as well. And that's a good thing because your spine is connected from your tip to your head. And it's good to get that movement up and down the spine might be really good. It's a nice little massage, internal and external. And then release and relax. Take a moment here. And then we're going to do some upper body work now. So when you're working on the hips and the legs, let's do some things to strengthen your back, open up the chest, etc. So we're going to bend the elbows and bring them up. If you can figure that out, uh, elbows in line with your shoulders. Now I'm just going to keep my hands soft in a fist. You can have your hands straight, whatever you like. Um, the first exercise that I'm going to ask you to try is, it's called the reverse press. It doesn't mean anything with that name, but the idea is you have to figure out how to find and feel the muscles at your mid upper back between the shoulder blades, the scapula. When you can find them and contract them, the shoulder blades will slide together and then releasing the contraction, releases them apart. So it's a squeeze in and a release out. Ideally, the arms don't move. So it sometimes it might take a few tries to really find those muscles without maybe having somebody help, uh, help you feel them. But see what you can do the best you can do. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, release. I remember some people used to talk about it as squeezing a walnut between your shoulder blades. I don't know if that will help you out. But anyway, try two more. Contract, release, one more. And now let's do another movement. So rotation of the arms in the shoulder joint. External rotation brings the arms back. Then you raise and internal rotation brings the forearms forward. So it's from back to front. And you focus and concentrate on the humerus, the main arm bone stuck in the shoulder joint, as rotating backwards and forwards. Keep the forearms and the hands aligned with, of course, the action from the elbow and the upper arm. And we'll do one more of these from back to front and then allow the arms to stand again. So we could call this position also goalpost arms. You might have heard that phrase before. From here, we're going to change, stretch your fingers out a little bit, and then bend the first two knuckles. You try to keep that palm from the knuckle down to the wrist and forearm nice and straight. Reach your thumbs out to the sides, and then bend your elbows more. Bring the knuckles to the sides of your face. Draw the shoulder blades closer under your back, and that helps to open the chest and it keeps the elbows wide, of course. You may not get there right in the beginning, so you do the best you can. And you can take a breath in, exhale, bring the elbows toward each other, okay. inhale, open, exhale, close. Oh, 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 so these are called elbow curls. 
opening and closing. Elbows open, elbows close. Again, you try to keep your legs steady, your belly and chest relaxed. Relax the jaw and the face. And we'll do one more of these. Open, close. And then release. Stretch your arms out. Wiggle your hands and fingers. You can kind of shake yourself loose, too, if you need to. Stretch your legs again, if you like. Stretch your arms over. Take a few deep breaths. And then, ah, let's move into... Um, foot ankle circle movement. Now, we often do it from straight legs, feet at the wall to help stabilize. So this is one pattern and we will bring one leg up to hold the leg to do foot ankle circles. However, if you prefer, you can stay in this position, legs bent, and still bring one leg up and do your circles this way. So how about trying 10 circles outward first. And again, you're attempting to keep the head, the back, the pelvis, and the left leg nice and steady as you circle the right foot at the ankle. And try to prevent the calf bones here from moving around as you circle the foot, which again is something that you get better at with practice. And then you circle inward. And then let's flex and point. So that's forward and back. Now, you should be happy you only have to do 10 repetitions of each position because many times the teacher will ask you to do 40 or 50 or 60 of those. And if you've not been doing them for a while, it gets pretty hard on your calf muscles especially. Okay, we'll call that good. Shake that loose. So you can either return the leg to bent if you started this way, or since I started with straight legs, reset your right leg, foot to the wall, hold on to the left. Now, um, circle outward first. I know some people don't hold their leg, but if you're good at that, keeping your leg steady without holding it, fine. I find it better to hold steady and then circle inward, opposite direction. And then point and flex. So that's forward and back. And you can add if you want, flexing your toes, curling them in and stretching them out. <laughs> if there's any movement in the toes there. And breathe. We'll do one more. And then shake loose. And release. Now let's go back to straight legs, opening the hips again and do um, another upper body chest movement. And here's where we could try using the strap or the block. So for instance, I'll give you three options actually. So with a block or a pillow, hold your arms up nice and straight, press evenly, softly into the block to tone up the arm muscles and keep the arms straight. These are pullovers, so we'll just do a few with this block going back and forth. So with your legs nice and straight, consider, especially when the arms reach back, that you elongate and stretch from the hips down through the legs, the feet touching the floor. And you could try breathing in and out. Okay, let's do one more this way. And then in the event you'd like to try Another method, you could use the strap, and I think it's simpler maybe to just hold it. Hold the arms about shoulder width apart or wider. If you're pretty tight and stiff in the chest and shoulders, you can go even wider. Straight arms again, of course, and you can do pullovers this way, back and forth. Now, you don't have to bring your arms all the way back to touch the floor. That may not be the range that you can move them today at this point, but it's something that we work up toward. So that feels good. And the strap and the block, mind you, these props are helpful to keep your arms nice and aligned and straight. Now, a third way to do this, if it's comfortable and if it works for you, is to clasp interlacing the fingers, keeping the arms straight. Now the arms are gonna be a lot closer to your face, but you're trying again to maintain straight arms throughout. 
Nice straight steady legs, relaxed belly and chest. Try two more and one more and then release. Relax the arms, shake yourself loose and let's go back to the bent leg position. From here, let's do a really nice little uh, moving twist, so to speak. It's called knee drops, or we call it windshield wipers. So feet can go out to the edge of your mat, the space that you're on, and then you're going to rotate your hips with the legs and knees to the right, and you could look left if you like. Knees up, and then rotate your hips and knees to the left, and you could turn your face to look right. So alternating and breathing, it's really kind of a nice, easy movement. A little like dancing. <laughs> Some people like to move their arms overhead. Um, someone I know calls this pelvic waves. <laughs> and it feels good, actually. You might try that. And then, of course, you know, if that doesn't work, it doesn't feel good to move your head, just lay still and centered and just keep the legs going right to left. We'll finish this last one. And then recenter and pause and then get realigned and centered on your mat. And now we'll do a static twist. That, that means holding the twist for a time, which is a really nice thing to do. And if you have a timer with you, you could time it for a minute, two minutes. We've done it for three minutes sometimes. Uh, so we return to this position, parallel legs, hip width. We did something similar on the wall, the assisted hip lift. So we bring the right leg up first, and then I like to turn it out. Place the right foot ankle on your left thigh. The twist comes when you lift your right hip, rotate, twist left. If you can, the right foot comes to the floor, nice and flat, and you try to keep this hip open so the knee stays up not falling down to the floor. So there's a little bit of act activity in your hip and thigh. And then the legs and the feet have gone to the left, turn your face, look right. And you can relax the arms way down. You can have the palms up, the palms down. I like to take my arms back overhead and stretch to elongate my upper trunk and open up the ribs and get some nice breaths in. But again, it might not work for you to do that. So it's okay to find your own place that's comfortable. So again, you can hold this for a minute or more if you like, but we'll roll out of this and then kind of reset. So before you change sides in any of the exercises, you should always come back to your neutral position first and then set up to do the left foot ankle on the right thigh and then the hips lift, rotate over to the right this time, and you turn to look left. And you try your best to relax and breathe and settle in. It's very pleasant, really, to be here. <laughs> the longer you like it, you might even have a nap, and that's a nice thing to do. So you take some nice breaths, be at ease, do a little extra stretch if it works for you. <sighs> and then... You roll out of the position onto your back, undo the leg. Again, if you like to stretch and roll a little bit, you do a little happy baby stretch, if you know that one. <laughs> Feels good on the back and your hips. So, we're done. You just roll over to one side. Use your hands and arms to sit up. And thanks so much for joining me. Hope you had a good session.